Hallelujah. Total Rabbah, but Yah for blessing us with another day of life. And I ask that you may bless our minds and our hearts as we come into the Shabbat Eve study. And I ask that you may forgive us for our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And I ask that you may give us the strength to strive for perfection. Give us the strength to be more like you. And I ask that we would not deceive ourselves and believe that this walk is too hard, but ask that you give us the strength to have even not faith to believe that we, we that we can do all things according to your word. And I ask that you may give us the strength to do what is right. For we know that the righteous will be persecuted and the righteous will be judged by society. But I ask that you give us the strength to be strong, to be courageous, to be firmly grounded in your word. And I ask that the cares of this life will not throw us off track. And I ask that you may give strength to those who are afflicted and those who are less fortunate. I pray for the widow, the fatherless, the poor, the homeless, those who may be in prison, those who need help. And I ask that for being your will, you may use us, your servants, to help those who need help. And I ask that you may give us the strength to refrain from all manners of evil. And I ask that we will not be deceived by the craftiness of this nation or this world, but I ask that you give us the strength to be wise, to be of an upright heart, and I ask that we would not get caught in the snares of the adversary, the traps of this world. And I ask that those who have already fallen into the traps, I ask that you may bring them out, use us to bring them out. And I ask that you may give us the strength to shed off any bad habits, whether it be procrastination or vain thoughts, vain imaginations. I ask that you give us the strength to be perfect men and women before your face. And I ask that you remove that spirit of fear, that fear that may cause us to stumble. I ask that we would never be afraid to share the truth or to praise you or to do the things that you have commanded of us. But I ask that you may give us the strength. I ask that we all can see you as our confidence, as our power, as our mighty Elohim, El Shaddai. And I want to say, I'll be out for your life, health, strength, and all the things that you have blessed us with. You are a righteous Elohim. And besides you, there is no one else. But your will be done. Always. Bless you are, Yahweh. Bless is your name, Yahweh. And bless he that comes in the name of Yahweh and truth. Amen, amen, son. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Torah, Torah, Adam, for the open tefillah, hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat shalom again, Ms. Bakai. Um, let's get all thing to pray in the most high for getting us through the week. We had a blessed unity Shabbat, blessed Shavuot. Um, I know um, the ones who couldn't make it, I you know, apologize for the internet. Uh, connections that was going bad for some reason the adversary was blocking the Wi-Fi into Russian. But uh, all prayer the most high we got we 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 had travel mercies there and back. So the most high gave a travel mercy to everybody who traveled in and made it home safely. All prayer the most all prayer the most high for you all who were helped to get to have a you know a good feast, a good Shabbat, you know, told told out y'all for you all, all your hands, and I told out to all my imams, all my sisters, you know, our kitchen committee, everybody put their hands involved and make sure we had an awesome feast, awesome Shabbat. Um, let's hit continue. So I open the floor for anybody who had a praise report. The floor is now open. Uh, Ema Shashan, you probably have to uh, log, log out and uh, log back in to, to get your sound. And I turn the floor to you, Ema Alger. I see you got your mic all open. I mean, Shabbat Shalom. 
Uh, I just, it's always, I, I praise Ava for another week. It's been a very cold week and I praise him for keeping us as love, blessing and protection for safe travels for all of those who were able to attend on Shabbat and for the feast. And I just say, told our Rabbah that he's allowed us to usher in another Shabbat day. Um, I am so grateful this week because I have been able to spend time with family. And reason being, it, at one time, everything they scheduled was on Shabbat. And on the second day of this week, I was able to meet with my family out in the park. They had a, a birthday celebration for one of my little cousins and I was able to attend. Today was my aunt's 94th birthday and she had a little gathering at six o'clock. And even though I had to leave early, I, I was able to attend. And I thought she would never stop thanking me for coming. And the thing is, I'm just so grateful because I enjoy being with my family and I don't want them to feel that I deliberately separate myself from them, but it's just that everything has always been on Shabbat. And then on the first day of this week, we will gather again. So I just say, Torah Rabbah Abba for allowing me to spend time with my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Toda Ima for sharing that. It had nothing like spending time with family. You know, um, we're losing a lot of our young. We use a little more young than our elders these day, uh, these times. And so uh, the much time you can spend with family, spend the much time you could with family. Uh, even, uh, our iPhone, I think there's a dog, Mickey L. But uh, I'm going to uh, let the Ima go first because I see she got a... a Mute, I'm out. So, Ema Rose, you had the, uh, the floor. Shalom, Shalom. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. I just want to give y'all praises for this Sabbath. I want to give him praises for this week. I just want to give him praise for the feast that was this past week. I really enjoyed the fellowship. I just thank y'all for giving me a chance to be with my family and my uh, grandson, which I hadn't seen in a while, and my great grands. And it was such a beautiful Monday, you know, after the feast. You know, when we do well and obey him, he said he will return the fathers back to the children and the children back to the father. And it made me know that. When we pray and trust Yah, that he will do just what he said he was doing. And that's to build up our faith, to continue to trust in him, and to continue to seek his face. And I just want to say, Torah Reba for all things and everything. I want to say, Torah Reba for giving me a chance to just minister to people even today and on my job and how they are enjoying to reading the Bible, you know, and coming back the next day and then being excited and saying, I didn't know that was in there. And I didn't know that was in there. Not trying to show them my way, but to point them to the word of Yah. And it's such a, ples a blessing. It's such a pleasure to just minister to Yah's people, to draw them by his spirit. And I just want to say, Torah Reba. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Ima. Um, a key thing you say is faith. On um, this past Tuesday, our men's discussion study we have, uh, less the topic was on faith. And you know the words say faith without action is debt. And the key thing about faith, you have to keep faith in the most high. Yes. Oh, uh, you're gonna go through some trials and tribulations, you're gonna get tested, things gonna happen. But you got to keep faith. You got to look at our ancestors that went through some a lot of hardship, and they just kept faith in the most high, and then they prevailed. Um, I shared my testimony on Tuesday about my faith with the most high back in 2015, going through this. You know, the ever cell was trying to get me <laughs> locked up, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, cause something, and I just kept faith in the most high, and and the most I got me through it. So it was it was a that was my worst trial, trial and tribulation going through all that. And 
also processing out the military at the same time and the maritime trying to execute me. That is that was just so much stuff going on in 2015. And plus, that was my first uh suit coat also that year. I did with true light, uh, and man, that was just I uh, went through a hurricane and everything that year too. So just the faith we have on the most side, man, he will prevail, man. So never, no matter what you're going through, turn to the most side, keep faith in him. And he will protect you and get you through it. Oh, yeah. And I and I turn it for you, a dog, Mikael. A dog, Mikael, he's speaking. Your mic still muted. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, family. First, I would like to give all honor, all praise, all esteem, all glory to Abba Yah. And I would also like to um, acknowledge my mother. I give her honor. I thank the Most High for her being on this walk as well and for all that he's doing with her and in her life. Man, I am just so grateful my heart overflows with nothing but gratitude. The Most High is faithful and he is mighty. Um, when I knew that Shavuot was coming up, you know, there were some things that I was believing the Most High for. Um, and the Most High showed. Um, one of the things was that I, I said to the Most High, I was like, you know, if I'm going to go to Shavar Ov to this feast, I'm not going to go if you're not going to meet me and you're not going to send me back different than I came. I know what it's like to go to church services and go to services. And I said, if I go, I need to be changed. I do not want to come back the same way I went. And today I stand as a witness saying I did not return the same way. I returned with a new name. My name is Mikael. Um, I returned as a new person. I'm just praising the most. I was just sharing with somebody today how I even have discerned that the most high has me walking in a different place, in a different dimension in him. It's not a place of pride. It's a greater place of humility. It's a greater place of me seeing that me wanting to ascend into the hill of the most high, me wanting to stand in the most high holy place, I have to have a clean heart and I have to, I have, to have clean hands and a pure heart. But the only place I can get that is from him. And so I just thank the most high today for um, just helping me to continually die to myself daily. I rejoice in him giving me this opportunity to walk this narrow path. I mean, it's like, this is a wonderful opportunity that I've been granted to walk in this narrow way. And I just thank him for the love that he is working in me toward his Torah and helping me to clearly see things so much better and to see that Torah is my Abba. It's my loving Abba, you know, that provides for me and protects me and shields me and leads me and sustains me and, and, and keep me straight. You know what I'm saying? He make crooked places straight and he make rough places plain. And I just say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I also give him praise for um, moving in my son's life. There are some things that are changing. I know they're changing. It's manifesting. So I want to thank everyone who is on that 12 o'clock prayer line. I want to thank all those who are on that 5 a.m. prayer line, those who are remembering me and my family and my son in prayer. I just thank the most high for you. I am so glad to be a part of this Mishmakah. And I yield. Hallelujah. And told her, told her, Adon, yes, we had got your name. Finally, we got it. Adon Mikael. Hallelujah. It was announced on Shavuot. Oh, man. I tell you. 
Man, all praise to the Most High. All praises the Most High. Uh, we got a treat for y'all this evening. Uh, Maurice Shemak, um, him and the Miss Wakai in Kentucky with another assembly this this week, Shabbat. So, Adon Kanaka and Adon Shia are going to be uh, leading discussion this evening. So, hallelujah. I turn it over to you, Adon Kanaka, and you and Shia. Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, all praise the most high for allowing us to have another week. It was a told time last week during the feast, the Shabbat and the Feast of Weeks, Shabbat. So tonight, <clears throat> we'll be getting back to the, the portion of the Torah. So we'll be starting tonight with Shemot Exodus chapter 24. Shemot or Exodus chapter 24. Uh, I'll read the chapter and then we'll open it up for discussion after we conclude with the chapter. Shemot Exodus chapter 24. I'll give everybody a moment. All right, Shemot Exodus chapter 24, from the top. And he said to Moses, Come up unto, uh, unto Yah, you and our own Nadab, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship be afar off. And Moses alone shall come near Yah. But they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yah and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yah have said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of Yah and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yah. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that Yah has said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which Yah have made with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elim of Israel and there was under his feet as it were paved work of a sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw Elim and did eat and drink. And Yah said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give you tables of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of Elim, and he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, our own and who are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of Yah abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yah was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount. In the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up unto the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so I know that was not a long chapter, so we'll go ahead and open it up for discussion upon chapter 24. Um, 
the first thing that, that I noticed that jumped out to me is in verse three, where it says that the people answered and said all the words which y'all said will we do. So we know that sounds familiar back in chapter 19 when they were on the mountain. That time they said that all the words that most high would said we will do. And then it says it again in verse, verse seven, they repeat it again. So we see <clears throat> the covenant being sealed with the blood, Moses sprinkling the blood upon the people. And we see that there's an order or a structure with the 70 elders in verse one and the dad, Abihu, Aaron, and the 70 elders. And we see that there's rank and structure in the nation where Moses was the one that went all the way up to, the, to uh, talk with the Most High because the people said they were too afraid if you read the previous chapters. So they left the dad and Abihu and the 70 elders at the mountain. And Moses went up and got the commandments of the Most High. It says he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. So we know that there's more than 10 words because 40 days and 40 nights, that's quite a bit of information, more than 10 words that we read commonly on Exodus 20. So we know that he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights getting the instructions from the Most High. And we see that Sleek up. Does anyone have any uh, points to bring up thus far? Well, Shash Mark, the floor is yours. So, so, Kane, yeah, I was focusing on, um, I believe it's the first verse, first precept. And I know it mentioned the seven elders. I know that's something that uh, we talk about a lot. You know, the more he talks about a lot, you know, respecting the elders. One thing I thought about, you know, imagine that the people didn't, you know, they didn't respect the elders, you know, the elders are, the, you know, a portion of the people that the Most High called up. So if the Most High calls them up, you know, he wants them there, you know, of course, you know, you're going to have to show them some level of respect. That's something that I, I was uh, thinking about. Also, uh, I was thinking about the discipline of Moshe when it comes to doing the service of the Most High. You know, Most High says he went done, you know, a certain way. You have to do it that exact way. And I think about, you know, the, the mistakes that I make in my daily life. You know, I know we all make mistakes. You know, when you're cooking or running errands, you know, paying bills, you know, you make mistakes. So that's something that I thought about. You know, you have to be focused. You have to be disciplined you know, in life, especially when it comes to doing the service of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And then, um, where is it? Verse, oh, verse five, it says, they sent young men, children of Israel, which offered burnt offering. So they even had the young men involved, you know. So those young men, they had to have discipline as well. You know, that's something to think about. You know, those young men, they had to do it exactly the way the Most High wanted to do, you know, sacrifice has to be this way, you know. So, when I read, you know, chapters about, you know, priest duties and the things that they did during this time, that's one thing I think about, you know, discipline and everything has to be the exact way, you know, the most high wants it. You know, there's no room for mistakes here. Are you? Gang, 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 told out. Gang, we see the, the importance of the elders um, because they have the experience, the knowledge and the experience. And that's what we're supposed to draw that information from them because they have the connection they have the the trials and the tribulations and the experiences that's why we have the elders among us uh don't me kyle shalom shalom i was just kind of like looking at verse 12 when it says that um yahuwah said to moshe come up on the mountain and wait there um, and then it goes into, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for them, uh, for their instruction. And I was thinking about this coming up to the mountain, 
because for me, that's been like a motivation for me, for me um, since hearing Baruch bring out a point um, at Pesach when he came out of Psalms 24. And he was saying in verse three, Psalms 24, it says, who shall ascend the hill of Yahuwah and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart who do not lift up their souls to what is false in this translation and who do not um, swear deceitfully. And I was just thinking about how Moshe had already had that, um, that experience with the Most High when he told him to take off his shoes. So the Most High was really doing a work in Moshe up until this time because now Moshe is ascending up into the hill. Like, like I'm saying, like in Psalm, just telling us in order to ascend up that hill of Yahuwah and to stand in his holy place, to stand in his presence like Moshe was going to do, there has to be clean hands and there has to be a pure heart. But my thing is, is that the Most High is the only one who can give us that anyway. You know, we can't find clean hands or a pure heart anywhere. So we have to come into the presence of the Most High. We, it's not an option for us to expect we are going to have clean hands or to expect that we're going to have a clean heart and we are outside the presence of the Most High. We have to be in his presence. It's necessary. We have no other options to be able to ascend up the hill. So that was just the point I was thinking about. Dang, all praise to the most high. That's, that's a great point. Imam Shoshana, floor is yours. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, one second. Because uh, my, um, can you hear me? Can I can hear you. Because my um, laptop volume is acting up. I have to go on my phone. But um, verse one, um, where um, Aaron's sons, he has four sons, but only two of them was called up to the mountain. And we know later on that those two sons are the ones that offered up false um, offering up to the father, um, um, the incident that he, they offered up. And as um, Adon Mikael was saying that though, who shall ascend up into the mountain, those have clean hands and a pure heart. And these two sons of um, Aharon were called by the father and yet they ended up and they were in his presence from a distance, but they were in the presence and even fellowship with him as they said they ate with him. And still, and they end up turning away from the laws and the commandments of the father and got caught up in self. So it lets us know that no one is um, uh, extinct from faltering and falling, but we have to be careful that we keep our focus and keep our eyes on the Father, that we don't make the mistakes that they have made. So this was a good example for us to follow, how to keep ourselves pure before the Father. Aye. Gang, hallelujah. We look at um, verse 10, where it says, and they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven and its clearness. And then going along, tying in with uh, Don Michael, was saying, uh, Mikael was saying about the clean hands and the pure heart. The pure heart means to be clear or to be sincere, you know, or empty meaning there's not anything cloudy. So we have to make sure that we have that those clean hands and that pure heart, that we don't have any any cloudiness or anything that's covering our, our hearts, anything blocking us from coming unto the most high and sincerely. Okay, Yaquab, floor is yours. Hello, yeah. 
Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Kopp. Um, I, I just want to kind of uh, focus in on um, the elders, you know, <laughs> um, that delegation that, that, that the Most High called up uh, into the mountain also, but not as far as Moshe, you know, um, um, Aaron's, Aaron's sons and then the 70 elders, you know, and then it, it, it says that uh, after, Mo, after Moshe came down from that first visit with the Most High, that he talked to this delegation and, and gave them all that the Most High had said, right? And then that delegation, uh, the Levites <laughs> and, and the elders agreed to the covenant, to, 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 to all that the Most High said, right? And then, you know, they, they, they celebrated. And then, then now the book of the covenant is, is um, well, the book of the covenant is there now, as we see in, in the next couple of chapters. And then that's what Moshe uh, read to the whole congregation of Israel. Uh, and, and then the whole congregation of Israel um, said the same thing that that delegation of the Levites and the elders said that they, whatever the most high commanded, whatever the most high said um, that you delivered to us, we will do, you know, and, and I think I'm just thinking on the on the part that that you know we see a lot in scripture that the elders are are quote unquote the the gatekeepers you know what I mean they they they're supposed to have the not only uh age but you know the 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 experiences of life that 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 they can apply to to these commandments this way of life <laughs> you know what I mean like like um like it, it these, these elders already got their hands in the fallow ground. These, these elders have already, um, you know, uh, decided and, 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 and weeded out the, the good seed from the, from the bad seed and all of that. So I think that when, when the elders went up there in the mountain, um, that delegation, um, it's so they could I don't know how to exactly word it, but but they they needed to understand um, what this this Torah is going to do, what this this new lifestyle is going to be for all the children of Israel, and they agreed to it, you know. And so now, <laughs> you know, like when when we read that the elders, if the congregation makes a mistake, the elders have to put their hand on on the head of of the bull. And, and slaughter the bull, you know, because they, they, they're supposed to be the, the, the experience and the gatekeepers um, for the nation, you know, and I think that's significant in this, in this chapter also. So that, that's just what I wanted to bring out that, that, you know, it's, it's not just that the most high decided to bring up the elders uh, and, and, and Aaron and, and his sons. I think it was very significant that, that the pillars of the, of the nation get it um and and get it uh with no distractions they they were separated from from the rest of the congregation and and they were taught so to speak in indoctrinated into this new culture this new lifestyle that most high wants for the whole nation of israel and then the elders um you know are, are now responsible to the whole congregation to make sure that that the whole congregation understands, based on their experience, this new Torah, this this new uh, way of life for Yisrael, you know. And I know it's not new Torah. Torah principles have been in the earth since the beginning, but it's codified now into what we call the Law Torah. And I and I think that it's very. If we miss the point about about the responsibility of those elders, we might miss out on a lot. And it might explain some of the reason why why we're in the position we're in. Um, now and as we look back through the history of our people, so I'll, I'll yield at that. I, 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 that just jumped out at me. Can't hold you up, Torah, for expounding. I know you've talked many series about the importance of the elders, so I'm, it's good to hear you expound on on the purpose of the elders and why we should give them the respect that that they deserve. And can I can I just 
I, I just want to respond to that too. It, it, and it's not really all about the respect to the elders, but but um, the elders have a huge responsibility um, to the nation. <laughs> you know the, 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 that that's really the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that that the elders have a huge responsibility to the nation uh, of Israel. You know, um, eventually that they're, they're going to pass down to the next generation who will eventually be elders, who will pass it down to the next generation who will eventually be elders. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's a huge responsibility. And I, and I think if, 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 if our ancestor elders, uh, the majority would have taken that responsibility a little bit more seriously, we, we might not have wound up, um, throughout history and, and currently where we are. And if we could look at our, our elders today, I'm not just talking about the elders that know their Yisrael, but I'm just talking about elders in general. Um, you know, I, I, and I don't mean to take up the whole platform, but, but I mean the responsibility because, you know, I, I have elders in my family, my aunts and, 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 and uncles, you know, and I say, uh, yes, ma'am. And, and, and yes, sir. And they were like, ah, eh, don't call me, sir. Don't call me, ma'am. You know, that's, that's 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 uh, shirking their responsibility a little bit, you know what I mean? Or 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 they see the 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 youngsters going off and they won't make a correction on that. And and I and and I think that's why the Most High called those elders up with that with the with the with um, Aharon and and his sons to say, look, man, this is this is this. I'm putting it on you. <laughs> I'm putting it on you. You guys have the experience. You know when I say fallow ground you know what that feels like because you've already been through it you know when i say uh um you know the briars and 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 the thickets and and all of that you know what that that is so um i'm putting it on you to make sure this this culture this torah is is understood to the to the next generation coming up and that that's the point i was trying to make hello yeah gang okay. i'll you priest And we can see some of the uh, the delegation in verse 13 and 14, where it says uh, Moses rose up and his minister, Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of Elim. And he said to the elders, tarry you here for us until we come again to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. So we can see the, uh, the delegation here where they... They're saying if anybody has any issues, come unto them because they have the experience in these matters and how to handle these issues while, while Moses and Joshua are going up into the mountain. Don Mikael, the floor is yours. Shalom again. I, I was just wanting to land back on um, what uh, Zakain was saying um, because I was thinking about how like even in this time time frame or this time period of this era that we're in, you see that a lot of the elders, like even individuals that are older than myself, for some reason, it's like uh, this era, this time is like, no, everybody wants to be young. It's like you got, elder men, you know, they sag in their pants. I mean, like these like are elder elders, people that would be considered elders, you know, um, or you have like women that are like actually great grandmothers, you know, they're, they're looking at themselves a lot different now. They're saying that like, um, you know, the age, the age, the age is a difference. Like they're saying like 60 or 70 is no more you know, like, oh, that's a young age. You're just beginning to live. So it's like all of this different indoctrination in the minds of the people as well. It's like, like he was saying, nobody wants to take responsibility. Everybody just wants to be like a kid or young. Like sometimes you may go somewhere and you may see like a aged or seasoned person, I'll say. And they may be dressed like they are about 30 or 20 years old. And you just kind of like looking like, wait a minute. So it's kind of like there's just some kind of spiritual shift or something. But 
I was just wanting to bring out that point that it's like just not wanting to take that responsibility that Zach, Zach Wild was saying. I yield. Dang, how you out? Good point. Good bring up. I don't shot you, Mark. Floor is yours. Ken, I was thinking about, um, you know, we were reading about, you know, Aharon and his sons and seven elders and Moshe and uh, Joshua. And I was thinking, you know, there are levels in the walk with the Most High, yeah. And then I was thinking, you know, the Most High, he knows where we're at, you know, he can reveal it to us, you know. And when he appoints someone up, you know, you have to carry yourself a certain way, you know. Um, you know, we all have to strive for righteousness, but, you know, those people that are up there, they have to carry this up a certain way. You know, for example, you know, if a president of a country does something, you know, people are going to know about it, people are going to talk about it, they're going to say, how can he do this? You know, why did he do this? Why did he say this? It's going to be all over the media. You know, but if, let's say, a writer, you know, for the, the work in the, the White House or the government or a computer analyst or someone, if they did the same thing, people could care less. You know, they still may be wrong, they still made a mistake, but it carries a different weight. Um, that's what I was thinking about. And also in verse 13, when it says, and Moshe rose up and his minister, Joshua, and Moses went up into the Mount of Elohim. So I was thinking that, you know, I'm not exactly sure how old, Joshua was at this point, um, but I'm just assuming that he was younger than Moshe, and he was with Moshe when he went up to the Mount of Elohim. So you know, the Most High, he can call who he wants, uh, you know, to do his service. You know, so I always thought that was interesting. You know, he was with, and you know, when we get to the end of the Book of Dabarin or or the I would say the first Book of uh, Joshua at the end of the Book of Dabarin of Deuteronomy, uh, Joshua he takes over or Moshe after he passed away. So you kind of see him training him up, you know, he's decided he's going up to the Mount with Elohim. And then when Moshe passes away, it's like the most high passes the torch to him, you know, of course, you know, he leads people, you know, he fights for the people. And he said, most high even told him, you know, the way I was with Moshe, so I will be with thee. So, are you? Okay, how's you up? Great detail about the transition from Moses to Joshua. And then like Zakin was saying about the reason why the, the elders had this information was to pass it on like Moses did to Joshua. And we, as we see in that example. Uh, Ima Audrey, the floor is yours. I just wanted to comment on the elders and how, you know, we're supposed to carry ourselves a certain way and so that the, the younger generation will respect us and what have you. Um, there was something I just heard that just, just triggered something in me. My mother was telling me in her church, my, my mother's 92 years old, and she was telling me in her church how the younger women, she called them younger women, but they're my age. And they're wearing leggings to church. And she was saying how disgraceful it was because they wear leggings and short t-shirts and short tops and what have you. And it's like, when we were growing up, just the presence of the elderly women commanded respect. I mean, these ladies wore their hats, their gloves, their, their, their dresses were a certain length or what have you. And they carried themselves in such a way that you respected them. And today, you know, it's like, there, there are young women who want to call themselves glamma, but like glamorous, they're glamma instead of grandma. And um, I heard uh, Zai King was saying how, um, I think it was Zai King or somebody was saying something about, uh, you know, how they carry themselves. And it's just like, it, it's very difficult to respect people like this when the elders are looking like the young folk. I mean, you, 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 you you have to differentiate between the two of them. And it's like, I think that's why the younger generation does not receive from us or we can't tell them anything, especially if you're looking like them because they, they don't have that respect for you. So we have to raise our standards and we have to carry ourselves a certain way to demand that respect. I yield. 
Absolutely, Ma. We definitely got to get back to that. Oh, Zach, if you have something else, or you put your hand down, or uh, uh, I don't. I was I was gonna put up the uh, praise hands for okay. Ema's comment. Okay. Okay. All right, so if we look at verse uh, 15, where it says that Moses went up into the mountain and a cloud covered the mountain. And the glory of Yah abode upon Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yah was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So, as Maury Brute mentioned last week, we talked about in the name of Yahweh, and it mentioned that there was no physical description of the Most High. When you read about the Most High coming down, it was in a cloud or in a fire. You don't read a, a physical description of what the Most High looked like so that the people would not be caused to worship that instead of the actual Most High. So we see here that the Most High came down and the cloud covered the mountain. And then it came down like fire. So just to bring that out again, as it was mentioned last week. Uh, does anyone have any other comments on this chapter before we go to the next one? Okay, we'll go ahead and go to Exodus chapter 25. Shemota, Exodus chapter 25. And Yah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take of them gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and chitlin wood oil for the light spices for the anointing oil and for sweet incense on its stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And they shall and they shall make an ark of shit and wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he shall overlay it with pure gold, within and without shall you overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. And you shall make, and you shall, and you shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it, and you shall make staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold, and you shall put the staves in the into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark; they shall not be taken from it. And you shall put the ark into the ark, the testimony which I shall give unto you. And you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And you shall make two cherubims of gold. Of beaten work shall you make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one, on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make of the cherubims on the two ends thereof, and the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be, and he shall put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you, and there I will meet with you. 
and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give unto you in commandment unto the children of Israel. You shall meet a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And you shall overlay it with pure gold and make thereunto a crown of gold round about. And you shall make unto it a border of an hand breadth round about. And you shall take, and you shall make the golden, uh, and you shall make for it four rings of gold and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall be the, the rings be, places for the staffs to bear the table. And you shall make the staffs of shifting wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be borne with them. And you shall make the dishes thereof and spoons thereof and covers thereof and bowls thereof to cover with all. Of pure gold shall you make and he shall sit upon the table showbread before me always. And he shall make a candlestick of pure gold, a beaten work. Shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out the sides of it. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side. And three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with the knot and a flower of one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knot and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick and in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knots and their flowers. And there should be a knot under two branches of the same and a knot under two branches of the same and a knot under two branches of the same according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And he shall make the seven lamps thereof. And they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongues thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that would you make them after their pattern, which was showed you in the mount. So, the Most High speaking to Moses here, starting this chapter, and then you see verse two where it says that they bring in me an offering of everyone that gives it willingly, with his heart. So the Most High is looking for those who are giving willingly. You read other scriptures that say the most high loves the cheerful giver and those that give willingly. So we see all the materials that they are building here, bringing here for the building of the ark and the, the candlestick and the, all these materials that are needed for the tabernacle. Before we go any further, uh, anyone have any comments uh, to bring out at this point in this chapter? Don't me, Kyle. I'm just looking right here where um, it's talking about this offering. Um, it says, and Yahuwah says to Moshe, tell the Israelites to take for me an offering from all whose heart prompt them to give. You shall receive the offering from me. But then he goes on to say, this is the offering that you shall receive from them. He's specific. He says, this is the offering you shall receive from them. And it's like he's listing the importance of the offering. He starts with gold and silver and bronze, and he continues to go down. But when I think about this, I begin to think about, okay, so we're talking about Israel. We know that they were in captivity because this is, their time they're coming out they've come out but back here in exodus chapter 12 we see that before they left it says in verse starting at 35 it says the israelites had done as moshe told them they had asked the egyptians for jewelry 
of silver and gold and for clothing. And Yahuwah had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have what they asked. And so they plundered the Egyptians. So I was thinking about how, you know, I mean, think about it. You are in captivity and you got a chance to get their stuff. And so you were asking them for this gold and all these jewels and all of this, but you going out into a wilderness. <laughs> I mean, it's like, well, what am I going to do with all this treasure, you know, out in the wilderness? But once they get out here in this place, it's like the most high says, okay, now this is a part of them being tested. This is a part of that, me trying them. I brought them out. I've granted them such favor to get all this stuff. This is, I'm the provider. I've given them all this stuff. Now I'm going to get them out here because they can't do nothing with it. They can't pawn it. They can't trade it for nothing better. They all out here in the same bohu together with all this stuff. What are they going to do with it? So now I'm going to see how much they are willing to offer to me um, that I might be able to create a tabernacle for myself to come and actually dwell among them. So I, I don't know, I was just thinking about that, I yield. Gang, how we up? Throw it out for that, that break off. Shot Smart, do you, you have anything? Floor is yours. Gang, yeah, when I read this chapter, you know, I was thinking, you know, it's a detailed chapter, kind of similar to what I said about the previous chapter. You know, it's very detailed. You know, the most high likes things in a specific way. You know, with the gold, you know, the menorah, the candlestick, and, you know, the wood and cherubims. He likes things, you know, a certain way. You know, the most high likes, he likes, you know, beautiful stuff. And another thing I was thinking about, you know, when we get to chapters like this, there's a lot of detail. And sometimes one thing I think about, how do I apply this to life, you know, today? And then sometimes, you know, we might read a chapter where we just names, you know, genealogies and things like that. And I think about, well, how does this, you know, how can I apply this to my life? You know, what can I do with this information? And I thought about um, two precepts. Um, so it's First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. So again, it's First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. And it says... All scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness, that the man of Elohim may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that's something that I try to keep in mind whenever I read any chapter. You know, there's always something, you know, the most high wants us to see. You know, he put it here for a reason. You know, so. And when I read this, I just think about the detail of the Most High, you know, the way he wants us to do things a certain way. And I also see this, you know, where is it? Verse 22, it says, and there I will meet with thee and I will commune with thee from above, above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give in the command unto the children of Israel. So the most high, you know, he's telling them to do these things that he's telling he's gonna meet with them. So I see that as like a father, you know, getting his household in order, saying, hey, you know, I want you to set the house up this way. I'm gonna come back, you know, I want this done, I want this done, I'm gonna go to work, you know, I'm gonna when I come back, I want things set up this way, you know, and then when I get back, we're gonna eat, we're gonna do this. But I want things this way, you know. I have some people, you know, in charge, but you know, come back. When I come back, I want things done this way. So that's that's the way I see it, Mr. Chuck. Are you? Again, the most high is very precise and very detailed and very organized with how he likes things done. Down to the exact measurements. So I can y'all up floor, George. Okay, Toda. And and, and I kind of like um I'm going on the same lines as 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 uh, Don Shashamar was saying too that you know it's very detailed, and, and I look at it as as building um, discipline, being meticulous in in all our actions. You know, 
uh, like you said, you know, all scripture um, was written for our, our, our uh, understanding, right? And then, then it's and it's profitable. <laughs> so when we look at all this uh, meticulous detail, it to me it is just like the Most High is, is is teaching us discipline and and how in our in our walk in our thought in 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 everything we do we should be thinking meticulously like that you know uh, make sure nothing is 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 left out and make sure nothing is is uh overlooked or or out of place you know that that i think he's 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 it, it builds discipline you know and and i'm just gonna kind of you know in the military and we was growing up there's a lot of things we did that seemed over the top but it's 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 um it's meticulous you know and 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 if we really think about it it's just, it's just my thoughts just my thoughts you know that that um you know Hamashiach said the the be ye perfect as your father in heaven is 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 perfect you know and and if we can get our mind to thinking and and our and our our actions to be meticulous like the way he taught us how how to make the the tabernacle and all of that then then that's how we that's <laughs> that's that's how we become perfect too you know it's it's the it's the the understanding of how meticulous we have to be you know not that we have to be not make any mistakes but if we got the mindset that that we don't want to make any mistakes i think that's the that's the path to being perfect too you know not not just the the not being not making any mistakes perfect but the the mindset of i i want to make sure this is done to the best of its ability and completely is is a perfection also so i i, I yield gang hug you up and as we see about the the ark of the covenant being built here um i'm pretty sure most of us are familiar about the man Uzzah who was trying to stop the ark from falling over. And then he ends up getting, the most High took him out because, you know, he wasn't assigned to the one to touch it. So even with all this material that we have, there were certain Levites that were assigned to even the way that they dealt with these utensils, the way they carried the Ark of the Covenant, the way that they, certain priests were responsible for lighting the, the menorah, the candlestick, and there was a certain way that they had to cover it. You know, you couldn't just pick it up the way you wanted it to. The Most High was very specific on how he wanted the materials to be carried. Does anyone else have any other points thus far? Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Coach uh, Waleen. I've just been on for a little while. Um, but when I think about the the uh, the Hebrew names, the places, the language, the uh the the special, like uh the uh excellent way that uh Yah does things and he points out for us, it makes me to understand that he's distinguishing his people, distinguishing everything about us. And if we, if we listen to others or, or, if we, or if we stay asleep, we won't even recognize, we will not recognize ourselves. When I look at the names, uh, when I look at the names of the, you know, it seems like when the, when the, when the Bible was changed or when the scrolls or whatever it was at that time were changed, um, all the names could not be changed. All the places, you know, the language. And uh, it just identifies to me that he's speaking to he's distinguishing himself and he's distinguishing his people. And that's that's really, really good if if we could recognize that it's us. 
I yield. Get holy up. Now, just remember that Moses is getting the instructions about the materials, but Moses is not himself building this. You know, if you read later on in the, in the chapters coming after this, you will see that the Most High is given certain men the spirit of wisdom to, to build this, to build all these, uh, the candlesticks and the, the, uh, the, uh, the stone for the breastplate. And the Most High has already given certain men the, the, the skill set on building this. So Moses is relaying the message, but he's not doing this himself. There's been, as we said earlier, uh, delegating based on skill set. So we see that uh, this is not a one-man show. So Moses is getting the instruction from the Most High, and he's departing what he has into those who have the heart to prepare that which is, needs to be prepared. So all the people are bringing forth this, and as it says, every joint supplies. So whoever has the skill set to do it, the Most High will bless them with that, with the proper tools to build them, to build His kingdom. So I just wanted to bring that point out. Um, don't me, Kyle. Floor is yours. Yeah, I was just thinking about the exact same thing, just about community. You know, every, there were, there were different people doing different things. I guess I was thinking from um, like the mindset of all the fabric that was involved in the tabernacle. You know, they used a lot of fabric. Um, and so all of that, putting that fabric together and making all the little Ashashamar, like Zakin like talked about, um, you know, all the little intricate parts and all the details and all the artistry. You know, this place was absolutely beautiful. Um, and you probably, if you're, if you're in the wilderness, you probably could see it like glittering us up from far, far away because of all the colors and the way the sun would hit the, the fabrics and the colors. So this was like every, there were various components involved in this. And I was just thinking about out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse four, it just talks about in this translation, it says, now there are variety of gifts, but the same Ruach, Hakadesh, and there are a variety of services, but the same, um, Adonai, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same Elohim who activate all of them in every one. So it's just the most high wisdom. I was thinking about Moshe, like you said. Moshe was, he had a part to play, but his part was the ability to organize because he was, you know, taking in all this information. I'm like sitting here rereading and glancing over just everything that he was telling him in chapter 25. And I'm like, wow, this is a lot of information to be taken in. So this is like, I see the power of Yah just like infusing this man, just opening this man up and giving him the capacity to take this in. Because for me, sometimes it's like when I'm sitting under various mores sharing information with me, sometimes I don't have the capacity to take in everything that every single more is saying. Sometimes for me, it just becomes like a waterfall that I'm standing under. It's just pouring all over me. But sometimes it's like I'm opened or I'm stretched where I can take in large amounts of certain things that the Most High is trying to give me. So it, it was just really amazing me to just be able to kind of like get a visual of this great power of the most high, kind of like pouring all of this information in this man and then him having the capacity by the Ruach HaKadosh that's helping him to um, 
to take all of this information in and then to relay all of this information back out. It's just absolutely amazing. I yield. Okay, how's it going? Imashu, Sean, floor is yours. Tabasalo, Mr. Ka. Um, my mind is going a little deep here. I'm looking at the arc that was made of acacia wood and then overlaid with the gold inside and out. And what was placed inside this arc um, uh, eventually. And I see how it reflects us, how we are the vessels of Yah made from the earth. And he said that we shall come forth as pure gold. He's purging and cleansing us that we may come forth as pure gold. And in us, he is putting his word. He is putting, he's budding us into the vessels he intended us to be. So I look at this ark and I see us and how the father wants us to be. I yield. Hey, how we are to that, to that bring up. E Marjorie, floor is yours. Oh, uh, Imar, your, your mic is still muted if you're, if you're speaking. Um, I just wanted to reiterate something that you had mentioned in verses 14 and 15. You know, the Most High left nothing undone. He covered everything, every detail. And when he said that the staves should always be with the, in the rings, they shall not be taken from it. He covered everything, even in how he wanted it, wanted the ark transported. Therefore, there was no reason for anyone to touch it or what have you, or to carry it any other way except for the way that he instructed them to carry it. And that just brought to memory how this book is full of instructions to us. And if we just follow the instructions, there are no problems. But when we don't follow the instructions, that's when we end up getting into trouble because the instructions benefit us. They're there for our benefit. They're there for our good or what have you. But there are times when we don't do things according, we don't adhere to it or do things the way that we should. And then we end up getting in trouble. Just like touching the uh, ark. I yield. Okay, how's that? If we see in verse, uh, verse 17, where it says, you should make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and two cubits and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth thereof. And he should make two caravans of gold, a beaten work shall he make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. So we know about the mercy seat uh, was when the Most High would communicate with the, with the high priest at the time, the sons of Aaron, once a year on atonement. So when atonement comes around, when we read the scriptures about the mercy seat, we see here that it's being the measurements of the mercy seat here. When the priest would go into the, the holies of holies once a year, first for his own sin and then for the sins of the people. We see here the, the measurements being built for the mercy seat. And then we see the cherubims, which the uh, the two cherubims, when we know that uh, when Adam and Eve got put out of the garden, they said that there was cherubims there preventing them from getting back in. So these angelic beings that with the wings that Most High is having built here could be a symbolism of what is also being built on top of the mercy seat. This is the point that I wanted to bring up. And then we see at the the end from 31 down to the end, this is where we get our menorah, the seven stick can the seven candlestick menorah from. Which you see us lighting the menorahs. We see a lot of us have menorahs. This is where we 
get the idea of the menorah in in these verses here. Does anyone have any any other points to bring up before we move on to chapter twenty six? Can yeah, that did some uh, research on the acacia wood and the wood that's used for the, the ark. And so that wood is not just you know an ordinary wood. That wood, you know, it's a, it's a durable wood. It doesn't scratch easily. It's water resistant, you know, and it's um, highly resistant to you know fungi. So it's a it's a durable wood, you know, and it's naturally. Uh, I think it has naturally. Um, repels, you know, bacteria and stuff like that. So it's a durable wood, you know. I, so it's not just, you know, any wood that you would just find in the wood. They had to go out and look for this exact wood that the most high wanted. And I was thinking about they put the testimony within the ark. So I see that as like, you know, the words of the most high, you're supposed to guard it, you know. You can't just read the word and just, you know, you don't protect it, you know, you keep it in your heart. So that's what I think. That's a, that's a, the correlation that I see with the acacia wood and you know, the words of the Most High testimony. You know, just yeah, it has to be protected. You know, you know. Are you? Okay, told out for the bring out about the acacia wood. So the Most High wants the best quality. You know, acacia wood is good quality wood, and just like this pure gold that we read about throughout, throughout the chapter. Most High wants the best material. And like uh, Adon Azar mentioned in Zechariah 13, 9 about being tried, the gold in the, the, the gold being purified. So we should be as pure gold that's being purified. If no one else has any other points to bring out of this chapter, we'll move on to 26. Uh, Zakin Yakwa, floor is yours. Okay, I just wanted to kind of uh, point out, and we probably already know it, um, that that uh, mercy seat, you know, where he told Moshe that, um, you know, that's where he'll com commune above the mercy seat between the cherubim, you know, um, and about, uh, you know, the commandments that he'll give to to him to give to the children of Israel. And that that mercy seat is, is copperest. In, in Hebrew, and, and the root word is kapar, you know, and, and that's the same root word as Yom Kippur, you know, that uh, the Day of Atonement. So, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, I just wanted to kind of bring that out, that that's, you know, that mercy seat is where, um, you know, and then on Yom Kippur, they go in uh, to plead, um, and the Most High said he will forgive the nation's sins <laughs> you know so I, I just wanted to kind of bring that out that that um that mercy seat okay how we up all right we'll go on exodus shemot exodus chapter 26 Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen uh, and blue and purple and scarlet with the cherubims of cunning work shall you make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight, 28 cubits and the breadth of one curtain, four cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another and another five curtains shall be coupled one to another and you shall make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the cellar which of the in the coupling and likewise shall you make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second 50 loops shall be shall you make in one curtain and 50 loops shall you make in the edge of the curtain that is the coupling of the second that the loops may take hold one of another and he shall make 50 tacks of gold and couple the curtains together with one tack with the tacks, and it shall be one tabernacle. And he shall make the curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle. Eleven curtains shall you make. 
the length of one curtain shall be 30 cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and the eleven shall be all the one measure. And you shall couple five curtains by themselves, and sixteen by themselves, and shall double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. And he shall make fifty loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling, and fifty loops in the edge of the curtain which is coupled the second. And he shall make fifty tacks of brass, and put the tacks into the loops, and couple the tent together that it may be one, and the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent. The half curtain that remains shall hang over the back side of the tabernacle, and a cubit on the one side and the cubit on the other side of that which remaineth in the length of the curtains of the tent, it shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover. And you shall make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering above the badger skin of badger skins. And you shall make boards for the tabernacle of Shittimoy standing up. Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. Two tenons shall there be in one board, set in order, one against another. Thus shall you make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And you shall make the boards for the tabernacle twenty boards on the south side south. And you shall make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for its two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle on the northward, on the north side, there shall be 20 boards, and there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the size of the tabernacle westward, you shall make six boards. And the two boards shall you make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides, and they shall be coupled together beneath, and they shall be coupled together above the head of it unto one ring. Thus shall it be for them both. They shall be for the two corners. And they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver, 16 sockets, two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. And you shall make bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle. And five boards for the, the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the two sides westward and the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach from the one end to from the end to end and he shall overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for places for the bars and he shall overlay the bars with gold and you shall rip the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed you in the mountain and you shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of cunning work with cherubim shall it be made and you shall hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver and you shall hang up the veil under the tax and you shall that you may as bring and thither within the veil the ark of the testimony and the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy and you shall put the mercy seat upon the ark of testimony in the most holy place and you shall set the table without the veil and the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south and you shall put the table on the north side and you shall take and you shall make that hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework and shall make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and their hooks shall be of gold and you shall cast five sockets of brass for them so we see here a lot more very meticulous details precise a lot of uh royal beautiful colors And we see the thing that caught my attention the most was about this curtain. There's a veil between the holy and the most holy place. So as Zachary just brought out about the, the mercy seat, 
they would put the mercy seat in the most holy place. And this is where the priest would go in once a year behind his veil. He could just go in any time he wanted to. He, he, only had, he only had one chance a year, and that was the Day of Atonement, as uh, Zakian had brought out. Uh, does, do anyone have any points to bring out this far? Okay, hey, uh, it, it might sound a little, little uh, trivial too, but I, I kind of look at it too as, as you know, getting a glimpse at, at the at the most highest taste. You know what what he likes. You know that's that's uh, a lot of fine details, some fine materials, and 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 all of that. You know, it kind of gives us a, a insight on on our Abba, uh, his taste, and and things he he likes too. So I, I mean. That's just kind of like something that kind of stood out to me too, man. This is this is a lot of, um, you know, uh, how can I put it? Um, fine material, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not just uh, run of the mill material. This is this is fine, beautiful um, material, and it kind of gives me a glimpse at, at the most highest taste, you know. And 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 I think. Um, we're supposed to have kind of like that same taste, you know, we represent the most high. So in our garments, um, you know, <laughs> uh, the way we, we appear, you know, is, is a representation of, of the most high too. So I, I just, that kind of stood out to me that the most high has, 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 uh, <laughs> excellent taste, <laughs> you know, I, you know. Gang, all we up. And, and then you see a lot of, uh, when you read about the priest garments, they had a lot of these same colors too. When they had the garments and the shoulder plate, the shoulder uh, pieces and the the, uh, the stones to represent the twelve tribes of Israel, um, I'm not sure who was first between Ema and uh, Shashamar. I'm not sure who was first. Can I are you? Okay, Ema, you're trying to floor George. Hold on. Um, I was looking at verse five where it is using the fifty as, and I thought about jubilee when I thought about the 50 and it was at the top and the bottom of the curtain that had the 50, you know, the 50 Jubilee by <laughs> you. Also the number five, you know, these numbers that he is using, they're all symbolic. Praise you Hallelujah. Turn up and Ima. Oh, Mark floor, George. Yeah, and I was uh, focusing on verse 33, and I was reading it in this, the 2009 scriptures version. I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, and you will hang the veil from the hooks and shall bring the ark of the witness there behind the veil. And the veil shall make a separation for you between the set apart and the most set apart place. Uh, verse 34, and you shall put the lid of atonement upon the ark the witness in the most set apart place. So I was thinking about, you know, you have the set apart place and then you have the most set apart place. And then, you know, the Ark of the Covenant was in the most set apart place. So it kind of goes back to what I was saying about um, verse, well, chapter 24 of Exodus. You know, you have different levels. You have, you know, Aharon and his sons, Aaron and his sons. You have Moses and Moshe, and then you have the elders, you know, they're, they have their position. You know, they're all in a group, and then the Most High separates that group. He just tells, you know, Moshe and Joshua to come up to the mount. So, and then, you know, we just read, and I just read, you have the, the set apart and then the most set apart. So, you know, there's levels to it. And I was, you know, just going back to, you know, this walk, you know, the Most High, he knows where we're at in this walk, you know, and he can reveal to us where we're at, you know, so. I thought that was interesting. How are you? Okay, hallelujah. So what happened? We'll bring up. Don't be careful, George. I'm just like thinking about all of this, this craftsmanship. Um, like Zakane was saying, 
you know, the most high has this exquisite taste. And um, I'm just thinking how, even when I read, as I read back and forth through this book at times, and I come to the part where the tabernacle, he's giving him all these instructions. That's not my skill set. So sometimes when I'm reading, I find it difficult to put all these components and pieces in place to get this picture of how everything actually is being set up, this wall here and this pole here. And I can picture different pieces in my mind as I'm reading it, but sometimes because I'm not a, uh, uh, what, what would it, the, the, one of the individuals who build things, um, that's not my skill set. So sometimes it's like I'm kind of like piecing together how this could have actually looked. I can get an idea of how the pieces are, but actually putting them together as we're reading it, that part doesn't um, register to me sometimes very clearly. But I can tell, as he said, the Most High has this exquisite taste because. I'm hearing about how even in the fabric, you know, um, the, 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 the linen is twisted, fine linen. And when you deal with fabrics and things like that, as I have in the past, you can look at a piece of material and you can tell that it's an extreme, you don't even have to touch it. You can just look at it and you can tell how, um, how expensive a piece of material is. Um, and so just all of those things. <clears throat> but what also stood out to me is verse 30, because he says, he says, then you shall erect the tabernacle according to the plan for it that, were, that you were shown on the mountain. So Moses also saw like a plan and I, I'm just using the term like a diagram or like uh, uh, the blueprint, you know, the most I wrote this man out a whole blueprint because here he's rever referring back to, okay, remember what you saw when we were up on that mountain, you know, so you make sure all these parts are connected just like that plan that you saw. So this is just like absolutely amazing, um, I yield. Can't hurry up. And, and just remember, Moses was in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. You know, he was getting all this information too about all the the details and each twist and turn and how many times you're supposed to cut it this way and the colors and the type of skin. He was getting all these instructions in those 40 days too. So it wasn't just the the, the uh, commandments, it was also these instructions for how to build the tabernacle. Just wanted to highlight that. You know, just like you said, uh, Don Mikael, about how he had to remember all these details. You know, I'm just trying to picture it in my mind how it would look without actually having seen it already, you know. Does anyone else have any other? points in this chapter. I know it's a lot of details and, you know, it may be hard to, you know, pull more out, but I know it's, it's very, the taste of the most high has already been said about how he likes to find materials and how specific he is on how he likes things done. Uh, Ima Shoshana, the floor is yours. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking about all the responsibility that um, was put on Moshe that the father trusted him with, with all this knowledge and all these instructions and all these people that he had to lead and guide and, and instruct and counsel and intercede for that alone. One man, I, 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 oh my goodness, I, I just thinking about that is just, it's bewildering. <laughs> and how he was able to stand up under all that, that the father strengthened him. And you know, each time you're in the presence of the father, 
and you you get more strength, you get more encouragement, you get more revelation, you get more knowledge and understanding. And oh my goodness, each time he went up there and when he came back down and his face was glowing, you can you, I can't imagine what how the people couldn't even want to be around him, <laughs> knowing that he had spent that much time with the father and come back looking like that. You know, and how the father wants us to be like that. I, uh, oh, I yell. I yell. Okay. And, th and that's why they had, you know, uh, delegation, as, as, as it was said earlier, that you had different duties and responsibilities with captains and officers. And, because Moses' father in law gave him the instruction that if you keep doing the way you're going, that you and his people are going to wear out because one man can't deal with, you know, probably over a million people at one time. You know, that's why they had captains of hundreds and captains of fifties, captains of tens, and so on and so forth. King, King. Uh, Zaki Yakwa, floor, George. Okay, and I, I just land back on, on uh, Ima Shoshana also, um, you know, and, and, and that was a lot of pressure. And and he almost folded. Remember, he went to the most high and said, "Look, if I if I got to keep doing all of this, I I'd be better off if I was dead." And you know, and the most high told him to to bring uh, those those seventy elders and took some of Moshe's ruach, <laughs> you know, and and put it on those seventy elders to help him out too. So you know, yeah, I can I can I can I can only imagine that that pressure and that responsibility and and you know that that Moshe had on him. And then you know this whole time in the wilderness, he, he's he's getting he's getting fed a lot of instructions, you know, that are meticulous, you know, and and so so I I I, I kind of I agree with with e. Shoshana. That is that is that's a feat in itself, you know. All praise to the Most High, you know, the Most High strengthened him, and and when he asked the Most High for help, the Most High said, "Okay, yeah, I I, I give you some help. Bring bring me." Uh, 70 of those elders that you that you uh will vouch for and I'll, I'll give them some of your rule I'll help you out <laughs> you know and, and I put in the chat too that you know that that the way this tabernacle is is um constructed and and you know maintained too is is that tabernacle in all its glory it had to be mobile too and and when the cloud moved they had to they had to break that thing down kind of kind of quickly and 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 you know move to another place. So I think a lot of those instructions had to do with it being durable and mobile. Also, are you? Sleeka. Also, uh, so I can as you were saying about they took the anointing from Yah took the anointing off some of the anointing off of Moshe and put it on them. He didn't give them a separate anointing. He took it off of Moshe. That's some anointing. Okay, okay. Okay, hallelujah. Don Mikael, floor is yours. While we're talking about Moshe and, and, and all that the Most High did through him, you know, I'm starting to think back to, you know, him being able to ascend into that hill him being able to stand in that holy place. And I was thinking about, um, you know, Moshe didn't just leave from um, Pharaoh's house and go to this place with the Most High. There, this man had to go through some real serious work. The Most High had to deal with him. So now my mind goes back to go, okay, now, this man was up in Pharaoh's heart, being raised like Pharaoh's son, loving the best, having the best, esteemed all in Egypt. And now you being brought down, you being totally stripped. And you are actually running for your life. You are, you are running out, you know, into the wilderness somewhere. And in all the turns and the the, the downward roads and the rough places and all these places this man had to go through to get to this place that we are talking about now, just him. Um, 
not only him, you know, having all this information and getting all this information, but him actually being put in the place to come up that hill and stand in that holy place before the most high. You know, it's like just my mind, I'm like, wow, you know, it because I'm just thinking about me. I'm like, you know, just day to day, you know, trying to walk this way and just things that I have to continue daily. I'm having to continuously die to myself, you know, and submit myself and be um, slow to speak and be um, quick to listen and be slow to anger when I'm being punched at or poked at it. And, and that part of me, that old part that wants to rise up and having to bring all that stuff under by the, the help of the Ruach HaKadosh that abides within me, it's nothing to compare to what this man has gone through. And, and I don't, we, we see some of the things that he went through um, with his wife and with Miriam and with the people rising up, but it's not that intricate heart work that we can actually identify. But just as my mind began to think about him, this man went through some breaking because we are not, we are not going to be able to ascend we're not going to be able to stand in the holy place outside of the most high doing some work in us. And I was thinking about in um, chapter, I think it's like chapter 25, when we were talking about the different goals. In one translation, it talked about beaten, beaten gold. He said he wanted it to be beaten gold. And I was just thinking about, you know, just precious things, how it just has to be refined and it has to be fired up and it has to be cut down and chiseled and just very painful things <laughs> I will say for me at times um so I'm just like thinking about Moshe and going wow there was some serious work going on in this man's heart I mean looking for direction for million at least a million people going and pleading and not getting an answer i i can't hardly take it sometime when i'm pleading for myself and i don't get an answer when i want it now you got a whole bunch of people a million people at least you pleading for and ain't getting no answers and having to be patient and having to wait and having to know which step to turn a lot so much to take in are you? Gang, all the way up. It shows you how special of a man he was, you know? Um, uh, not sure who was first between Ima Shoshana and Zakane. Uh, Ima Shoshana is, is got the floor uh, after uh, a dome. Okay. Ima Shoshana? Oh, uh, I'm laying back on a dome, Mikael. You know, um, I was reading in Proverbs today and I come across uh, the scripture in um, the 16th chapter and it says a man's heart plans his way, but Yahuwah established his steps. Moshe steps were ordered by the father from day one, as in all of us. We don't know what the father has plans for us. The, the trials, the tribulations, the persecutions, the things we endure. The Father is molding us and shaping us for the work that we have to go through. We can't know highs unless we've been in the lows, or we can't know the lows unless we've been in the highs. So he's experienced both aspects of it. And the Father had ordered his steps through this to mold him into the vessel he was. So it's the same with us today. It's the Father's put examples for us of our ancestors. When we go through things and we moan and we groan and we're like, what's going on? We're confused and we're distorted. We get fearful and doubtful and want to quit and, and want to run and want to hide and want to shriek back. All the things that humans as we are do. 
But those steps, all those actions, all those deeds, all those things, they're ordered by the Father to mold us, to shape us, put us to the fire, to, to make us come forth as the best what he wanted us to do, just as he did with Moshe. And the anointing that was on him through his obedience, oh my goodness, if we can only achieve that, <laughs> Father, help us, just help us. I yield. Thanks, Lord, for that. Hallelujah. Uh, so I can't, floor is yours. And, and, and I know this is, it's, it's kind of, uh, off the subject, the main subject, uh, you know, the, the meticulousness of, of of the tabernacle and and all of that. But since we're talking about Moshe, you know, in in the book of Yeshar, in the book of Jasher, you know, it talks about that time that he was away from Egypt. You know, at one point he reigned in Cush. You know, he when he went to battle, you know, he had he had uh, he had men under him then too. You know, and and so like Ima Shoshana was saying that that you know the Most High. Uh, you know, it, it ain't like he just snatched Moshe out the air. <laughs> he he put Moshe through some things to 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 get him ready to be a uh, 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 Messiah to to bring Israel out of Egypt. You know, uh, he he had leadership. Um, he built up his leadership skills and his tolerance and and his his steadfastness and and all of that stuff while he was away from from. Uh, Mitzrayim, you know, that time that he was away from Mitzrayim before the most high called him back to deliver his 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 people, you know. So so like Ima Shoshana was saying, man, don't don't, you know, don't just look at your life as as you know, man, I I I'm um unfortunate or 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 you know, my life was was wasted and and you know the most high is 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 infinite in his wisdom. And like, like uh, Ima Shoshana said, the most high prepares us and shapes us to be vessels of his will, you know, and, and, and we can, if you, if you, you know, subscribe to Yashar and read some of the stuff that, that Moshe went through while he was away from Mitzrayim, when he fled Mitzrayim, you know, uh, I think that was the most high shaping him too, to, to, to do his job when he called him back to Mitzrayim to deliver his people. Okay, a lot happened between that time, you know. He also went to prison, you know, uh, for some years, you know. So just like we read about this, the extreme detail in these, in the tabernacle, the most high is very detailed about our lives too, you know, each and every detail that sometimes we don't see, you know, somehow it works out in the end. Um, Shash Mar, floor is yours. Yeah, I was thinking about, um, you know, just the materials again, you know, the silver, the gold, and the acacia wood, you know, and all those things are durable. Even the fine linen, the fine linen is a, it's a lot different from cotton. It's more durable than cotton. It's made from a, a flax, the flax plant, you know, it's also expensive. So all these expensive, you know, materials are different in their own way, you know, they're durable and and I was thinking about they use these materials to build up the sanctuary, you know, for the most high to build up the ark. You know, they use the gold for the manure. All these are things for the most high. And I was thinking about, you know, we when we build things for the most high, you know, um, coming from a spiritual, you know, or physical, you know, when we study, when we put things, you know, in place in our own house for the most high. Now we put it, you know, it in place where it's it's not gonna go anywhere, you know. You know, are we do our studying habits? You know, are they bulletproof? You know, is it going to be? Is it something that we can rely on? You know, you know, our routines when we seek the Most High. You know, when we build these things up, you know, make a schedule. You know, or you know, just set a room apart in the house to seek the Most High. You know, are we giving the Most High the best? Is what I think about. You know, you know, are we setting it up in a way where it's unlikely to fall down? You know. Are you okay? How you ask a good point, you know. Uh, something that we all have to examine within ourselves, you know. Are we do we offer the best, you know, do we offer the best quality to the most high with the way that we seek him, serve him, you know?
Well, it's getting close to the 10 o'clock mark. Um, do we have any other? Um, other on Mikael, floor is yours. I'm sorry, I, I, it just popped up. When, when you was talking about giving the most high our best, you know, and I was thinking about how the rich man who, I mean, this is just talking about an offering, but I'm just thinking about giving, you know, when the rich man, he gave what he gave, but then the widow woman, I think she was a widow, or the woman gave the might in some translation. That was her best. You know what I'm saying? So your best may be different than my best. My best may be different from your best. And we have to walk in our best for the most high. And so the way that helps me is that I don't look at your giving per se or, or, or somebody looking at my giving. I just keep my eyes on the most high and understands what he's requiring of me to give my best um, because all of our best to the most high is gonna look different. And I think sometimes we uh, can think that all of our bests is the same as somebody else's best, but uh, with me being born again, like for real, for real, I am really um, trying to understand where I am in my rebirth and really allow the most high to move me through this rebirth. He said, I must be born again, you know? And um, so just really move me from that, that infancy to that toddler, to that, um, um, I, I'm not sure parents, what it's been a while for me, what comes after the toddler. But in those stages, right on through as he continued to help me grow. So just praying that we would um, hear what the Most High is saying to each of us is our best to him and that we would yield and offer up what he's speaking to us is our best to him. I yield. Okay, I'll be up. So it kind of reminds me of the uh, the parable of the talents. You know, one was given one, some maybe five, some maybe ten. You know, you just it's about how you make the most of what Most High is giving you, according to your ability. Uh, Ima Audrey's floor is yours. I just wanted to say um, something was triggered when I heard you know the the best. You know, as we were reading this, everyone was commenting on the, the, the finest, how they use the finest wood, the finest material, they use silver, they use gold. And the thing is, we see here what the most high desires. And if that's what he desired for the ark, then we should know what he desires from us as well. And we have to ask ourselves, are we giving him our very best? And I know I'm reiterating what someone has already said, are we giving him our first fruit? Are we giving him our finest? And when we, when I think about Moshe, I know that he would never use me in the same capacity that he used him. But there's a possibility that he could use me on a smaller scale to do something else. And we have to ask ourselves, can we measure up? Are we preparing ourselves by getting in this word, by praying daily, what have you? Are we keeping ourselves clean and pure so that we can be used by him? And we have to ask ourselves, you know, daily, you know, you know, all our steps and what is it you have me do? I yield. Okay, how we Well, told out for all the participation in, in this discussion. Um, all praise to the Most High for all the points that were brought out. Um, does anyone have any final closing words before I pass it over to Shari Hunter for the closing temple? I'd just like to say that you did a, a toll a job uh, with the study tonight. Uh, 
it was very well edified and I enjoyed it. So that. Praise to the most high. Iman Lukert. Shabbat Shalom. I just like to say it was a very tough word. And I like to um I like to say that the most high likes things a certain way and that we should not go on our way but the way he likes things done. And um we need to do things that like y'all tell us to do and not our ways and give him our best. Is a tobe, tobe, tobe blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, with all the details and the gold and the acacia wood and everything that was brought out, how the measurements, the numbers, the, the, the uh, anointing, uh, the wisdom that he gave all the craftsmen, it lets you know that the Father has us in high value. All these valuable things that he is using and showing us how he values us, that we are like this gold and this silver and, and the number of things and how much he loves us and wants us to be in the image of his son and the likeness of them both. And this, this was a whole lesson to put us in remembrance and to give us a mindset of where our focus should be and um, to strive for what the Father desires of us and know that like Moshe had to go through what he had to go through to be what he was as also Yosef and all the other um, patriarchs. We too, we're no different. We have to go through what we have to go through to get to where we need to be. That the Father order our steps. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. Hallelujah. Toad, toad blessing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High. Uh, Sakin, you got any closing words before you close up? Hello, yeah. Hello, y'all. Yeah. And, and I'm going to echo the EMO. Um, I think you did an excellent job, uh, Adon, um, guiding the, dis the, the uh, discussion and, and bringing out the points um, uh, in, in the scriptures that, that we read through. And, and I think it sounds like we all kind of ended up at the same uh, place, you know, that, that, that um, we, we are the temple of the most high, you know, and, and all that um, meticulous building of, of, of the temple um, is, is the same way, you know, the, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, the most high built us kind of the same way, <laughs> you know, um, um, we, we, we're, we're supposed to be durable. We're supposed to look good. Um, we're supposed to stand out. We're supposed to represent him, you know, um, and, and the covenants, uh, in, inside of us, it, it's you know eventually it's supposed to be written on our our inward parts. So I, I think uh, told 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 me old uh, job Adon in leading this discussion, and I think it was very insightful. And and I do believe just based on the comments, we all kind of ended up at the same place. So hello, yeah, all praises to the Most High, all praises to the Most High, yeah, hello, yeah, oh yeah, all right. All right. Uh, sorry, Henry, are you in position to close us out? I just want to say, you did a uh, job, man, with the uh, discussion tonight. Hallelujah. I told everybody for their points. And uh, man, 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 I told y'all, uh, more will be proud of you. Um, Zakane, what time do you want to start tomorrow? I just want to get everybody to know because uh, Zakane, Yaqua, we. Holding it down for more Shemak tomorrow. So I don't think we would not have the culture study tomorrow. Um, um, 
we can we can start at um at our regular time to 12 30. um i did have planned for um some some hebrew reading during that cultural portion we'll just cut that short and extend the uh, praise and worship if that's told that's up to you i came you got the show tomorrow so whatever you need i came out we'll support Kane, I say I say we started this at our normal time, twelve thirty. Kane, 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 uh, told I yeah again for you all. Um, we'll be on at twelve thirty in, in the afternoon. Um, make the most I be y'all. Get y'all some rest. Uh, I don't make I yeah. You don't mind closing out tough life for us if you're in position. Sleek I don't. Um, it are are um. And I'm stuttering here. Um, Kanaka, are you gonna have a, a two minute tomorrow? Okay, I, sh I should have one, yeah, okay. Okay, kind of, kind of, yeah, so 12.30, 12.30 is told. Okay, okay. All right, Don, Mickey, uh, you have the flow to close out. Okay. Abba, yeah, we thank you and we praise you for this night. We thank you and we praise you for this time to delight in you to come to sit and to learn of our culture and our heritage and to be um, cleansed and to be um, dealt with by you and your Torah. We thank you, Abba Yah. And I just pray that as your word was sown into our hearts, I pray that you will water and that you would bring forth great increase for your glory, and your praise, and your esteem. Blessed are you, Yahuwah. Blessed is your name, Yahuwah. And blessed are, are all those who come in your name, Yahuwah, in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Salah. Uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, Mr. Fakat, uh, Lala Tov, Haba Shalom. See you on the AM. Shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I love y'all.